Well, welcome everyone back to the Lions Den Academy as we continue on the Spiritual Gifts interview series that we've been doing. Um, today's message will be, well, I think is going to be a profound one, just <laughs> having known Julie for as long as I have. Uh, we actually served in production together um, mm -hmm. at a previous church. She is still there. Um, I'm at Trader's Points now. And uh, we had initially talked about, when I first started the channel, um, doing this sort of interview mm -hmm. on this subject. But it obviously wasn't God's time mm -hmm. at that point. So um, I'm glad that you said yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, so that being said, uh, the, the, the specific uh, gift we're going to be talking about is the gift of discerning spirits. And once again, this is Julie Weber, um, everyone. And once again, thank you for joining. You're welcome. Thank you for asking me. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm flattered. <laughs> for sure. Um, so um, you do have a very unique testimony. Uh, yeah. um, so whatever you're willing to share, sure. um, I'd just say let's hear... Um, your before Christ version okay. of you and how you came to know Christ. Sure. So um, I will say probably when I was young, I always had kind of that, uh, I don't know, I was always kind of attracted to dark things. I mean, Darth Vader was my favorite. and still is my favorite Star Wars character. But um, I, when we moved to uh, Greenwood, uh, Indiana, I I was probably about, oh, I was in sixth grade. So I kind of gave my life then, but it was kind of, you know, not really, didn't know really what it meant. I didn't know what it meant. I just did because my parents did. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really have that relationship with, with Christ. Um, it was just because that was how my parents grew up. That's how I was kind of raised in a way. And But um, I don't know. There was just some... I had some knowledge even then that I, as an adult, I didn't understand how I got that knowledge. But as I, you know, went through high school, got into college, I drifted away from God and um, found myself kind of deep in the goth community here in Indianapolis and uh, started um, practicing metaphysics and um, that, um, doing a lot of research into occult practice and also um, witchcraft as well. So a little bit of it, a little bit of hodgepodge of everything, mm -hmm. but I would say um, <laughs> kind of the, not, it's one of the defining moments, I'd say, when I was about, uh, 21, 22, um, when I was kind of deep, really deep in the metaphysics and kind of really into the, well, back then they call it alternative night, but kind of your, the, the pre goth emo, uh, okay. culture. Um, I did have, I don't think it was a dream, but I think I was really visited by Satan. And I remember waking up and, him holding me, like having demons hold me down. Um, he had a gun to my head and said that he was coming to take me home. And I was new enough to s try to yell out to God. And he said, oh, don't even try it. Mm. He's like, God's not going to help you. He said, where has he been your whole life? And growing up, I kind of had not a great relationship with my parents, um, just kind of having a hard time finding my way. And he was using a lot of truths and using them like, well, if God really loved you, he would have given you this. You would have been this. Um, so really than Jesus's temptation in the desert. So yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, like you would have been, you would be liked by your parents, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, just like things that I knew to be true, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't, uh, and I was like, he's right. Mm -hmm. And he's like, God has never been there for you ever. Mm -hmm. He goes, but I have. And he said, you know, if you decide you want to belong to me, I will take you and, um, and I kept saying, like, you're a liar. Mm -hmm. 
And he's like, I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. You know I'm telling you the truth. And I remember all I said, I didn't answer him, which I guess now knowing what I know now, mm-hmm. that's a good thing. I did not answer him because yeah. I didn't go into an agreement with him. But at the same time, I did yell out, I'm like, God, help me. And I woke up and I remember just being like scratched and my pajamas were torn. Mm -hmm. And it was just because I had been fighting the whole time. Wow. Uh, Needless to say, I did go to counseling after that because uh, that really messed me up. Mm -hmm. But fast forward then, um, as I, you know, kept walking on that same path and diving deeper and deeper and deeper into darkness Mm. there was one night i came home after like a um kind of like a private event Mm. and it was like probably three o'clock in the morning and i remember that it was so audible and it said if you don't leave this life you will die oh and i was like well, I don't want to die. Uh-huh. And But looking back on that now, I think it, God was giving me a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, you can die a spiritual death. I will hand you f- fully over to him. Mm-hmm. Because I always kind of have one pinky toe in in church. Sure. You know, I I went to church every, you know, most Sundays uh, to save face. And even during that time. Even oh, during wow. that time. Um, and I was still experiencing God at that time, but it was like, but it was kind of like he had me by the foot, mm-hmm. and it was either I cho- would choose to go fully to him or turn away. Mm-hmm. And I s- just said, Jesus, I don't know what I'm doing. You're gonna have to do it, but I don't wanna die. And I'll just, like, you're gonna have to change me and you're gonna have to do it because I don't know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And even though it was three o'clock in the morning, I texted all my friends, emailed them, told them I will never never see them again. Oh my goodness! Um, and totally turned my back on that life. Did, and did you like block after you sent, or like did, like what sort of? They tried did to. You get? They tried to uh, get in touch with me. I have my best friend at the time. He was so concerned. He even called the police because oh he thought goodness. I was going to commit suicide. Wow. Um, but when the police came, because I wouldn't answer the phone, I wouldn't answer people because I'm, I explained to kind of, I explained to them what happened Mm -hmm. and they're like, no, you're good. Uh, yeah, we don't need to worry about you. Um, but yeah, I really, after that, um, I really started studying the Bible. I still hadn't really found a church home. Uh, but I study, started studying the Bible, and, you know, I guess in a way it was, I found God by myself, which I know is kind of rare, mm-hmm. but um, I really wanted to know him, and that's why I started studying, like, doing deep study, because I just wanted to know who he was and know him and know who he was as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And um, I never looked back. And I mean, and Satan has visited me still a couple times uh, saying that he will fight for me mm-hmm. and he will make my life miserable. But I'm like, you can try. Mm-hmm. But I know I'm like now he just kind of doesn't he doesn't know what to do because I will tell him to shut up because I'm like, you can't affect me like you used to. Mm-hmm. So, but that's a quick and quick yeah. and dirty version. <laughs> well, I appreciate you opening up about mm-hmm. that. I mean, I know a lot of it's, you know, raw and mm-hmm. kind of hard to, to share. So, yeah, yeah, appreciate you for doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you get saved mm-hmm. by Christ at that point. You're, you you said you found God by mm-hmm. yourself. Um, now, I know you've spoken before about you being able to look at certain people. Yes. And you're able to kind of t- tell certain things. Tell me about when that started happening and what that, like that whole experience. Well, I think, 
I think some of that comes from I really wanted God to use my past mm -hmm. for his glory. And the mm -hmm. whole and um and I know he can. Mm -hmm. I mean, all those years were not wasted for nothing. Mm -hmm. And in some looking back on that whole experience, sometimes I think that he allowed me to walk through that um and go th like dive into that to have knowledge because there are certain things where, especially in our Christian world right now, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of stuff that's being masked as Christian and it's not. Mm. And I'm like, well, that's not, you know, that's more like metaphysics. That's more new age. Mm -hmm. That's more, um, yeah, the progressive just, Christianity. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things there mm -hmm. that, um, that, you know, just, Educate just knowledge, educational knowledge, um, but I t the f it's kind of I didn't really it didn't really dawn on me what was happening, but um, and then I I mean this is a gift that only the Holy Spirit can empower right. uh, me to have. But there have been times where I've been physically sick around people, hmm. or I can't think straight, or it just um, like I get, now I get guess weirded out is a good term, mm -hmm. um, but there's just something I know that's with them. Mm -hmm. um, and it will really, it does, it makes me physically like nauseous and dizzy. And um, I'm still trying to work through how to navigate through that because... Mm -hmm. It's hard to think when you're in that, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's, and there's sometimes when I've seen like, it's a mask on people. Yeah. I remember you talking about that, but mm -hmm. can you describe that a little bit more? Um, it's like, I see their face, but not their real face. Huh. I see like this distorted, um, it's almost like it's contorted. Interesting. Um, and you can, it's almost like you can see the, like the, I'm thinking of one per person in particular, like it was just so, like it was almost like metamorphosed on their face. Like yeah. it was part of their face, but it was so like scrunched up huh. and it was, and it just looked very hard. Interesting. Interesting. But, um. There's other times when I've smelt things on people, and that's um, because nobody else can smell that. <laughs> You're like, I'm like, don't you smell that? Like, don't you smell smoke? Don't you smell, like, yeah. certain, uh -huh. like, what's that fire smell? What was that smoky smell mm -hmm. coming from? Um, and then so, some people were like, I don't smell anything. Or a certain type of, like, incense that's not normal. Like, huh. there's a certain... Because Jesus has a smell. I've mm. smelled him. Yeah. But Satan or his world also has a smell. Interesting. Hmm. So if you could describe that that like The devil hmm. smell? Yeah. Uh the devil smell is usually it smells like a fire. It smells um like something's burning. Hmm. And um I've only like it can it's like a it's almost like a passing whiff. So when you're when I smell it, it's um, like fleeting. So I almost have to, and it, I know like when I do it, it's weird, but uh, I feel ridiculous. But I'm like really smelling the mm -hmm. air, mm -hmm. and I mean I've had people like some friends. One of my spiritual mom, she's like, "What in the world are you doing?" And I said. Don't you smell that? And she said, smell what? And I said, something's burning. Hmm. And she's like, I don't smell anything burning. Yeah. Well, that's but, interesting. That, but, that makes me feel better. Because I, I mean, mm -hmm. this type of season, mm -hmm. it's campfire season. So. Oh, I know it. <laughs> so. But if, when you smell campfires at a weird time. I get you. Uh, okay. I mean, I've smelt it outside mm -hmm. at four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I shouldn't be smelling campfire mm -hmm. at at this early interesting so but okay. that's happened a couple of times and have you at any point um like i mean 
dealt with anything from like a, and I know like the movies they totally don't do it necessarily like the biblical way. I mean, we saw mm-hmm. like Jesus, you know, he simply cast them out with, mm-hmm. you know, a name and, and, and with a prayer. Um, there wasn't this long, inordinated process or anything like that. So, um, like, have you, you know, prayed for people to be mm-hmm. released? And, like, like what, like... Well, um, I, I haven't prayed. Well, I had... Well, so when I'm in a situation where I'm not sure what it is mm-hmm. or who it's attached to, I have prayed for that, um, for my environment. And, or I will pray over the mm-hmm. person I think it's attached to. And it's almost like you see their demeanor change. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and then the smell will go away. So, um I don't know if I've necessarily prayed for anybody and they've been released. Okay. Um, I don't think, I don't know if I'm being called to do that. Well, or... I don't, maybe, uh, okay. my time hasn't come. That's all I can say, but I have prayed for people and, um, especially when I feel like there's something around them mm-hmm. and, you know, from what they have told me that, you know, they have felt like at peace or they have felt like something being removed or um, just, or just no, like being concerned enough about them to ask them what's going on in their life. Um, sometimes it's not necessarily, you know, a demonic spirit or something like that, yeah. but it's just that they're, they can just be anxious, and I can feel their anxiousness. Okay. So, um, it's, it, it seems like, the, and obviously we should mm-hmm. all continue to grow in any of mm-hmm. the gifts that we've been given. So, it sounds like you're definitely growing in this and you're really diving into it. Um, so, I, I, I know that you've talked to me before but mm-hmm. about some of the steps that you've taken once you were diving all in. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I'd, I'd love to hear about that and really pushing everything away yeah. um, that you did before and then just like any additional tips or insights that you have for someone that that thinks hey I think like some of the stuff mm-hmm. you're talking about I, I've experienced before mm-hmm. so what next step should I take so I would really pay attention what you're listening to reading watching I mean I quit watching I mean I had a collection of horror movies I mean, when I talk about a collection, I had a collection. <laughs> and I got rid of all those. Um, I got rid of some of the, like, just um, things in my home that related to my past. Because mm-hmm. um, there were some things I know that were, that there were not good things attached to those. Um, I mean, I... During COVID, my neighbors probably thought I was moving because <laughs> of how I was purging my home. Wow. Um, every week, my garbage can was overfilled with stuff. Mm. I was just um, trying to get rid of everything. And I just stopped watching a lot of things. I stopped listening to a lot of music that I liked. I mean, I'm not saying that... I mean, we all need to be careful about what we allow. Mm-hmm. But there are some... And it's, I have found and I've learned as I've matured is that not every type of, not, not every movie, not every book, not every type of music, Mm -hmm. um, affects people in the same way. So whether there might be a movie that affects me, but may not affect you. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's some people that are a lot more sensitive um, to, but I also know enough to know that I'm like, yeah, that person, uh, knows a little bit too much about what's like, you can tell like some of that's real. Mm -hmm. And that's when I go, no, no, thank you. But I just, I just, because even in TV and things like that, you really have to be careful about what, Mm -hmm. um, you decide to watch. And I just pray 
but especially if I choose to listen to anyone um, or watch anything or listen to anything, I tend to pray for discernment. Mm -hmm. And I know if it starts affecting my spirit, then I need to shut it off. But um, that was like the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And I know I did a hard, um, like I was real strict in the beginning mm -hmm. because I just had knew I had to cleanse myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, but as I've kind of matured and, but I also focus like all my time focusing on reading the Bible and knowing God. And that's the most important. If we don't know our Bible, then we can't help anyone. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing that can help um, help anyone if they're under a spiritual attack is scripture. Right. So knowing your scripture, um, you can speak to whatever is influencing you. Yeah, just like, like I said, it sounds like he was doing the exact same thing to you that he mm -hmm. did with Jesus in the desert, but Jesus answered him back mm -hmm. with scripture every time. And if you don't have that scripture internalized, no. you, you can't no. do that. And I mean, I tell, like, if I start hearing, um, I know, like, with, you know, some people might, Satan attacks them by label, like, label, with labels. Like, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I admit, I'm not worthy of God's grace and mercy. Um, especially because I did play for the other team and whatever he gives me, I'm grateful mm -hmm. and thankful, but I know that I am worthy and, um, and I think that's, and so he knows that Satan knows he can't get to me that way. He knows he can get to me by promising things because I had everything he promised mm -hmm. but man it came at a huge cost because mm -hmm. when I renounced him I lost almost everything mm -hmm. and um, that was really but I almost feel like uh, God just pe was peeling the layers off John, John, until you, you were you lost everything yeah, yeah I've got so much more for you until you're like raw yeah and um, and then he starts putting new layers back on, and I, it does take time to mature, and but I think you just have to be willing. I mean, there's sometimes um, where I don't experience anything, and then there's other times where it's really crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just kind of take it as it comes. Right on. Well, um, any last words part of parting wisdom or, or anything that the holy <laughs> um, spirit's like you know tugging on you saying make sure you don't leave this interview unless you share this i would just say with any gifts um just ask for the holy spirit to empower you um because he's the one that gives the power he's the giver um now i understand i mean i don't understand why he gave it to me but he did, mm -hmm. and um, and that's the hardest thing you, we just got to remember is it's all about the giver and not the gifts because sometimes we can get so focused on gifts that we forget about the one who supplied it. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, with anything, um, I pray and just ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what needs to be revealed. Sometimes... You have to ask some questions, but also like, man, know your Bible, know Jesus, know the Holy Spirit, know God, know, know Father, um, because especially as time, as things are getting more and more muddled um, and our Bible is getting more and more muddied, um, that's, you got to know it. Mm -hmm. Because it can sound real good, but if it's not his truth, then mm -hmm. it's no good at all. Amen. Yeah. All right. Well, Julie, once again, thank you thank so much for oh, joining me. Thank yeah. you, James, for inviting me. It's yeah, been fun. Absolutely. 
All right. Look forward to seeing you guys next week. Um, don't miss it. Uh, Saturday at noon. Uh, God bless and, and keep you. See you in the next one. Bye.